Good evening, and thank you. Excuse me. Thank you very much for this opportunity to address what happened on election day. Um, I actually did not have a problem on election day, but I'm here. I voted. Uh, excuse me. I live at 224 Pearsall Place, and I voted Black Rock School. And I'm here because my heart goes out to the candidates and the voters for a missed opportunity and an abrogation of responsibility. Um, when you take the ballot outside of the machine and have a paper ballot, it becomes a commodity. It can be lost, it can be stolen, it can be forged, it can be compromised. And we have not kept up with the new technology, with rules and regulations and, and proper uh, processes and procedures to deal with this new method of voting. And people who are not properly educated who are, who are managing the activities at the polls. Um, I would, when I voted in Black Rock the first year, they had the scan method. I was one of the first voters, it was 6 o'clock in the morning, uh, and I opened up my privacy folder and there were three ballots inside. I was handed three blank ballots. And it's the first time it was used in, <clears throat> in our state and in our school. I was in shock, but of course I gave them back to the moderator. But I was very frustrated because I knew this could happen again many times over and maybe not brought to someone's attention. So just two things. I looked at the ballot and I don't see any serial numbers. You know, I don't care whether it's cleaners or buying something at a store, you always get an invoice and there's a number on it. How do you track these things? How do you know how many there are out there in the market, if you will? That makes me very uncomfortable. It makes me very uncomfortable. The other thing is, um, I did run for office for the city council here in Bridgeport. And in one of my campaigns, I did a direct mail. And I'm and I think in my district I had about 7,200 registered voters and of course we would mail to all of them and I had sacks, literally sacks of returned mail showing back up on my, my doorstep and we hear the cost of a ballot being anywhere from 47 cents to a dollar a ballot and we're all concerned what the cost of giving every voter a ballot is I would recommend that we do have an audit and go through the registered voters list to see how up to date they are. You know, in a, in a city you have a very mobile population and uh, you really have to stay on top of uh, new registrations, old registrations, uh, and I don't know if that's being done properly. But I have to tell you I was shocked when I received all those returned postcards. So. Those are my two points. I'm, I'm very uncomfortable with a paper ballot outside the machine. And I have to say, while I have the microphone, I don't like the idea of a computer um, digital voting from home because then the teenager becomes our, could be our worst enemy. So um, just for some future thought. <laughs> My name is Ed Gomes. I'm the senator from the 23rd district. And on election day, and I, I voted at Helen School. I voted early in the morning so I didn't run into this de debacle, whatever they would call it. But I was, um, I was at Wilbercross School in the afternoon when I got a call from some people. It was, uh, it was part of the, the people that we were working with and they said that at Winthrop School they had run out of ballots. And they asked me would I come over there to talk to people to keep them from leaving because I knew people. So I took a trip over there. By the time I got over there they had cured a problem some ballots had arrived. But I went right back over to Wilbur Cross and found out while I was gone they ran out of ballots. And they had turned up uh, 35 people away. The first thing I started to do and there was still about 30, between 30 and 40 people still there, is to work on people to keep them from leaving. 
I talked to the registrar on the phone, and then she said they were sending the ballots. They sent the ballots in sheets of 100. They arrived by police officers. The first police officer arrived. I told him, you need to give us more than 100 ballots. Go back and tell them that we need to have more than 100 ballots. Like I had some sort of authority at the polls, which I don't. <laughs> but he told me, he said, Senator, I will do that. So he went. And the next officer came up maybe about 20, 30 minutes later, and he came back with a sheaf of 100. Then I told him the same thing. I said, keep bringing them until we close. The third officer arrived with 200. By that time, we had, the situation was well under control. Let me tell you something about this thing about the ballots itself. People are talking about the system is broke on the distribution of ballots. We have 169 towns in this state. About 10 or 11 of them screwed up. That doesn't say that the system is bad. It says that 10 or 11 people didn't do their damn job. We pay a registrar voter in this city here $68,000. Do your job. This new proposal of one ballot for everybody, uh, everybody that is registered. There is 69,000 people in the in a, in a city of Bridgeport that are registered. Well, do you think you'll ever see 69,000 people in Bridgeport voting? Now that's a hell of a, a drain on some resources. First of all, the bill has been put in and it suggests that they take it out of the election fund. I was at a meeting of appropriations yesterday, and I personally surveyed a bunch of legislators as to how they felt about this bill. All but one says, "No way." So you're going to run into you're going to run into resistance right there. They believe that something should be done, some sort of formula. I heard somebody suggest a formula like, out of out of the last three elections, pick the two with the with the two most votes, average them out, maybe throw 10% on top of that, and you probably hit a mark. But maybe that won't do it. But I know one thing. This didn't have to happen. And people that are responsible should be called up on the, on the, uh, should be called up on the carpet. Now, Chris talked about GNA. GNA um, he's, he's, he's part of, um, he's a, he's a co-chairman of that committee. On appropriations, there's a subcommittee on elections, and I'm the co-chair of that. I wouldn't like to see more things added to the, uh, um, the Fair Election Committee than there is now because there's a lot of things that have to be worked out on that. What has happened here, and it happened, and when, when something like this happens, the panic goes through to people like, they're being deprived of their right to vote, and it's their, their right. We worked too hard in an election to try to get people elected to see it blown because somebody doesn't do their job. I have to do my job when I go to Hartford. Other people have to do their job on the council. The mayor has to do his job. The mayor claims that there was no pressure put on anybody about the tax issue. Ha ha. Believe that, I'll give you another one. But the thing I feel like, if, if we got a system and it's not broke, maybe you should work on the people that are in the office who are supposed to do the job, rather than um, just uh, um, go through a whole, a whole new system again. There were a lot of uh, discrepancies in the election. There always is. So you get away with it. Maybe it is time for reform, but I don't, I don't think it's just with the count of the, uh, or the um, ordering of the ballots that we're talking about. Other than that, I don't know what else to tell you. Thank you.